This video is about photosynthesis, the big picture. It's the first part of topic 3.5 of AP Biology. What happens during photosynthesis? What's its chemical equation? Is it endergonic or exergonic? What are the two phases of photosynthesis and what does each accomplish? Describe the role of chlorophyll in photosynthesis. Explain the absorption spectrum of chlorophyll and other pigments. Connect the structure of chloroplasts to the reactions of photosynthesis. I'm Mr. W from learn-biology.com where we believe that substantial learning requires interaction and feedback and we're so sure of that that your subscription to our website comes with a money-back guarantee. What happens during photosynthesis? What's its chemical equation? Is it endergonic or exergonic? In photosynthesis, using light energy, here's the sun, photoautotrophs like plants combine carbon dioxide and water to create carbohydrates. That's what the plant is made of. Oxygen is released as a waste product. It's the source of biomass and the base of almost every food chain. The formula is 6 CO2, 6 carbon dioxides, plus 6 H2O, 6 waters, with light energy to power the reaction, are combined into glucose, C6H12O6, and 6 oxygens. This is an endergonic reaction for two reasons. It takes two low energy inputs, carbon dioxide and water, and converts them into a high energy product, glucose. It reduces entropy. That means it increases organization. And you can sort of count that out. So there are 12 molecules on this side of the equation, and there are seven on this side. So we've taken something that was disorganized, made it into something more organized. Um, highly unorganized carbon dioxide, it's diffuse. It's a gas, and it's made into solid matter. And that's a huge decrease in entropy. When did photosynthesis first evolve? What are some of the consequences of photosynthesis? In terms of when, based on fossil and chemical evidence, about 3.5 billion years ago, that's relatively soon after the emergence of life, 3.8 billion years ago, its consequences were vast. First of all, when the Earth first formed, there was no oxygen in the atmosphere. It's photosynthesis which splits apart water to release oxygen that created the oxygen-rich atmosphere that made our aerobic metabolism possible. And it also created an ozone layer. That's a protective layer in the atmosphere that shields us from ultraviolet radiation and that made life on land possible. So we owe everything to photosynthesis. What are the two phases of photosynthesis and what does each accomplish? We start with the light reactions that's on this side of this diagram and it converts light energy into chemical energy. And that chemical energy is in the form of ATP and NADPH. You already know about ATP. NADPH is like NADH, it's an electron carrier. The Calvin cycle is the second phase of photosynthesis, and it converts the chemical energy that's in NADPH and ATP into carbohydrate, and it does that by using carbon dioxide as an input, and it fixes that low energy gas into high energy sugars. Is AP Bio making you feel overwhelmed and inadequate? That's completely reasonable. At learn-biology.com, we understand why students struggle with AP Bio. The material is complex, the pace is brutal, and the vocabulary is ridiculous. But at learn-biology.com, we've created a way that makes it easier for you to study. Go to learn-biology.com, sign up for a free trial, and complete our interactive tutorials and interactive AP Bio exam reviews. We guarantee you a four or a five on the AP Bio exam. See you on learn-biology.com. Describe the role of chlorophyll in photosynthesis. Explain the absorption spectrum of chlorophyll and other pigments. Chlorophyll is the pigment that absorbs light energy in photosynthesis. And here you can see its structural formula. It's got a hydrocarbon tail that enables it to fit into the phospholipid bilayer of the thylakoids. We'll talk about those in the middle. And it's really this structure over here, this nitrogen ring with the magnesium in the center that enables chlorophyll to help plants convert light energy into electrical energy, as we'll see in a little bit. An absorption spectrum shows the amount of light absorbed at different light wavelengths by a pigment, by a substance that absorbs light energy. And chlorophyll has two forms. They're different based on this functional group. Here's chlorophyll B, here's chlorophyll A, and you can see that they both 
absorb most energy in the blue part of the spectrum and in the red part of the spectrum, but very little in the green part of the spectrum. And that's why leaves are green, because leaves are reflecting green light, whereas they're absorbing other light wavelengths. There are other pigments that are also involved in photosynthesis. One's called a carotenoid, and they absorb other wavelengths. What is the action spectrum of photosynthesis? The action spectrum, which looks a little bit different from the absorption spectrum that we just looked at, shows how various light wavelengths drive photosynthesis. And blue and red drive the most photosynthesis, and green drives very little. This was determined by the Engelman experiment. Thomas Engelman in the 1800s did a cool experiment where he grew a filament of algae under light from a prism that divided the light up into its various wavelengths. And aerobic bacteria grew around the filament best in the blue and the red part of the spectrum. And they were able to do that because that's where the most oxygen was being produced. You can, in the lab, and I actually hope that you did, recreate this experiment with the famous photosynthesis spinach leaf disk experiment where these disks of spinach leaves will rise based on the amount of oxygen that they produced. And you can set different variables like the intensity of the light or the uh, wavelength of the light. Connect the structure of chloroplasts to the reactions of photosynthesis. So chloroplasts, where do you find them? So here they are. This is a cross section of a leaf. These are cells within the top part of the leaf. And these are chloroplasts. There are many per cell. There's only a couple shown here. And in terms of the structure of the chloroplast itself, it has an outer membrane and an inner membrane. The outer membrane is a vestige of the evolutionary origins of chloroplasts. There's DNA, which is a vestige of the fact that this was once an independent living cell. There's also ribosomes. They're there for the same reason. And then there are thylakoids shown at number five over here. Those are membrane-bound sacs, and they contain the membrane-bound photosystems and chlorophyll for the light reactions of photosynthesis. They're organized into these stacks called grana, and surrounding them is the stroma, which is essentially the cytoplasm of the chloroplast. It contains DNA, it contains ribosomes, and it's where the Calvin cycle occurs. So that's where carbohydrates are actually created. Want to learn more? Sign up for a free trial of the website that guarantees your AP Biology success, learn-biology.com, and watch this next video.